as a nation which nation do you suppose the two wings of a great eagle could represent in Revelation chapter 12 verse 14 I don't know but it sure looks like uh, President Trump wants to help Israel right now you know could President Trump be helping Israel right now the way President Truman helped Israel 70 years ago could we as a country I'm talking about America now could we have dodged a proverbial bullet in the 2016 election There is the certainty of the prophecies which are coming to pass in real time before our eyes. And it was very interesting to hear something that Benjamin Netanyahu said in the 70 year anniversary celebration for Israel. The 70 year, let me go ahead and bring over this graphic right here. Israel is 70. I have this displayed right here just to take a look at this, the fireworks and everything. And, you know, I know that you've been seeing articles about this and, and the celebrations, but it was very interesting to hear Prime Minister, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu actually say in his speech regarding Israel turning 70, the rebirth of the nation of Israel you know 70 years ago it was interesting to hear him say that 70 is the blink of an eye did you guys pick up on that uh, I know some people did and you probably know where I am going to turn in the Bible right now. You probably know exactly where I'm going in the Bible right now. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I'm going over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and specifically verses 51 and 52. We're going to take a look at that. It's just really, really amazing. What we have here, remember, it was the Prime Minister of Israel upon the celebration of Israel's 70th year anniversary that in his speech, at least in one of the speeches that he gave today, at least the one that he has posted on Facebook that, that I was able to watch, he said that 70 is the blink of an eye. And of course he's looking forward to um, you know, Israel doing more things and, and uh, advancing and so forth. And Israel will. And we know that the Lord Jesus is going to return. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, is going to return and set up his millennial kingdom. And in fact, in Zechariah chapter 14, it describes how the nations are going to have to come to Israel every year and celebrate tabernacles, bow before the king. And if they don't, if they don't come, then they will not get any rain. Now, this is going to be during the 1,000 years that Jesus is 
ruling this world from Jerusalem. It's referred to as the Millennial Kingdom. Praise the Lord. Israel is 70. Wow, I'm looking at this graphic right now. But you know, he, he sure enough said it. He sure enough said it. This is Damian Jordan for the wise shall understand. And hey, David, good to see you, brother. Praise the Lord. We're just having a little late night Bible study right here, looking at current events. I know that some people don't really um, like to look into you know current events or politics and what have you. But you know what? I was really um, blessed to see a book about New England preaching of days gone by New England preachers you know when uh, the French Justice de Tocqueville came to the United States and wanted to discover the secret to what made America great he looked in all the different sectors of industry and and uh, everywhere I mean education and he looked everywhere and he could not find the secret of America's greatness. But then he said that he went into the churches and he heard preaching a flame ablaze with righteousness and he discovered the secret of America's greatness. He concluded Incidentally, that America is great because America is good. If America ever ceases from being good, then America will cease from being great. So if you want to make America great again, you can just consult with Justice de Tocqueville, you know, from the history of what he wrote. And... He made it pretty plain. He made it pretty plain. But what I want to do right now, since I'm here, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I want to read uh, from, well, we'll go ahead and pick it up from verse 50. The Apostle Paul is writing by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and he says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So we got a problem right there, right? You know, so well, how are we going to inherit the kingdom of God? Because we're flesh and blood right now. Okay, But he goes on to say, Nor does corruption inherit incorruption. All right. All right. So we've got, uh, you know, we've got this. Well, we have something in that verse, which thank you, Jesus. Father, I just want to thank you and praise you right now. And in fact, uh, while we're about to go deeper into this word right now let's go ahead and, and just ask for the Lord's blessing on the reading of his word in advance father in the name of Jesus we come before you right now we ask that you would add a blessing to the reading of your word we pray father God that you would bless our fellowship in and around your word in the name of Jesus amen okay now what we're looking at right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50, it's, it's, a, it's a verse which is speaking to two different conditions here. Notice, first of all, it says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now the Apostle Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is writing, writing to the brethren, brethren who would actually be reading this, brethren who are alive. Okay? And, you know, when you say you saw some someone in the flesh you, 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 you know yeah I saw him with my own two eyes I saw him in the flesh you know you're saying that you saw that person alive in person okay so the Apostle Paul says now this I say brethren that flesh and blood that means we who are alive okay flesh and blood we who are alive cannot inherit the kingdom of God in that 
present condition of being flesh and blood, okay? Okay, so we got a problem right there. Okay, well, how are we going to inherit the kingdom of God if we are still in the condition of flesh and blood? Okay, stand by. Operator says stand by. Okay, but then he goes on to say also, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Now, the reference to corruption is a reference to those who have died those who have been buried okay you know when uh, when the prophet said regarding Jesus after he you know died and was buried it said that he would not suffer decay now he died he died and he was in the tomb he was in the tomb we know for three days but prophetically in the Psalms it says that God would not allow him to see decay okay but those who have died and been buried and remained buried, what happens is their bodies decay, decompose, and turn to corruption, as it were. Okay, so what we see right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50, is a situation which, in which very concisely the Apostle Paul is addressing believers who are alive and able to read these words that he had written at the time that he had written them and he's also referring to those who passed away were buried okay and could now be described as uh, their bodies had seen corruption okay so in that verse right there, we have the Apostle Paul addressing both situations. Verse 51, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. You see, the Apostle Paul is referring back again right then and there. He's referring to the ones whose bodies had seen corruption bodies which you know, were buried decayed had seen corruption so he says behold I tell you a mystery now he's speaking to the ones who are able to read this because they're alive right they got flesh and blood they're alive okay behold I tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed he's talking about those who are at the time of the writing of these words were alive to read these words and he's also referring to the ones who had died and been buried and whose bodies had seen decay and corruption okay he says that we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed praise the Lord now verse 52 gets into something which was signaled prophetically I believe and he didn't even I'm sure he didn't even realize what he was doing but it's, it wouldn't be the first time that the Lord would allow someone who did not even realize what they were saying to say something which had a greater significance than they could possibly imagine because the Prime Minister of Israel in Israel's 70th year anniversary celebration of its Independence Day the rebirth of Israel as a nation he spoke some words which he 
there's no way that he he could have recognized the significance of what he said to believers in the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach all over the world. There's no way that he could have realized the significance of what he said when he said that 70 is the blink of an eye. Now somebody needs to just go ahead and say praise the Lord. I know it's past midnight. We're having a late night Bible study, but you know, go on ahead and somebody needs to say amen. All right. So now praise God. You've heard of songs in the night. Praise the Lord. I tell you, the Lord will give you something at nighttime. He'll give you some things at night. I don't know what it is, but he'll he'll give you some things. <laughs> he will give you some things. I mean, he'll give you some things in the morning. All right? He'll give you some things at midday. And he'll give you some things at night. Well, verse 52, we have the mystery revealed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we might say in the blink of an eye because that's what a twinkling of an eye is isn't it in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet Ooh, okay Behold, I tell, I'm going to read that again, verse 51 and 52. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn over to Isaiah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is so good. I mean, He is revealing things to us at this time. This is the revelation generation. I believe it with all my heart. <laughs> if you believe that, go ahead and say amen. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn right now to Isaiah chapter 26. And I'm going to read verses 19, 20, and 21. Okay, so here's what we have. Your dead shall live. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Your dead shall live. Together with my dead body, they shall arise. It's interesting. Wow, that is so amazing. Together with my dead body, they shall arise. Awake and sing you who dwell in dust for your dew is like the dew of herbs and the earth shall cast out the dead now, I said this before in a previous live audio when the earth casts out the dead you know, it doesn't cast it down, it casts it up, all right? And the word cast is also, uh, you, you can relate the word cast to, for example, like if you're, if you're casting a line, if you're, you're fishing, you, you cast it. The goal is to throw it as far out over, uh, you know, over a distance as you can. Uh, if you cast something like a a something that you're holding in your hand and you and you throw it, you know, cast entails that you're throwing it at a high velocity and you're throwing it over a great distance. Okay, well, 
the word says right here and the earth shall cast out the dead and the the earth's not going to cast the dead down it's going to cast them up but it's not just talking about any dead right here because I believe if you hold your finger in Isaiah chapter 26 verse 19 if you hold your finger there and now we turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 okay this is <laughs> this is all tying together it's all tying together 1 Thessalonians praise God Got that right here. Okay. And it says in verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Now it says we'll rise first right there, but isn't it interesting that in that verse, verse 16, that it parallels verse 19 of Isaiah chapter 26. It parallels verse 19, and the earth shall cast out the dead. But look what it's saying. I mean, it's all of verse 19 not just the the last part of it but all of verse 19 is looking an awful lot like all of verse 16 in first Thessalonians chapter 4 okay so what we're gonna do is just compare this for a moment here Isaiah chapter 26 verse 19 your dead shall live together with my dead body they shall arise awake and sing you who dwell in dust you know I've been having some singing dreams lately I, I mentioned that in the previous audio and the singing that it's been praise and worship unto the Lord and I tell you what in these dreams my voice was better than I've ever known it to be I mean it, it sounded like <laughs> it was the best singing I've ever actually sung and I've heard and there were other people who were you know just just everybody was singing and it was praise and worship to the, to the Lord and it was amazing the singing was amazing it was amazing it says right here in Isaiah 26 verse 19 awake and sing you who dwell in the dust for your dew is like the dew of herbs and the earth shall cast out the dead all right well now let's take a look at verse 20 Isaiah chapter 6 verse 20 come my people enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you hide yourself as it were for a little moment until the indignation is past you know when we read this verse right here verse 20 come my people enter your chambers you know Jesus said that he you know he said he said I go to prepare a place for you and I read this verse right here verse 20 come my people enter your chambers Family, I want you to know that you have a chamber that the Lord has prepared for you. <laughs> Praise God. And he says, come, come my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. Let's turn over to... 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord praise God now in verse 21 of Isaiah chapter 26 
It says, Be, uh, For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. So verse 21 takes a takes a turn in a different direction. You know, there's you know in verse 19 you've got awake and sing. In verse 20 you've got come my people unto your chambers. But it starts to make that transition in the second half of that verse 20. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. Verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Well, it is comforting to be able to read and know that we're going to be able to hide ourselves. We're going to be able to shut our doors behind us and hide ourselves, as it were, for a little moment. Why? Because in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it's talking about the day of the Lord. But even in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9, 10, and 11, what do we find? We find, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10, Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, again, that's the two different conditions right there, we shall live together with him verse 11 therefore comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing praise the Lord okay so that being said we are living at a time in which some very interesting things are developing you know uh, President Donald Trump uh, tweeted best wishes to Prime Minister Netanyahu and all of the people of Israel on the 70th anniversary of their great independence we have no better friends anywhere that's really an awesome statement from the president to the people of Israel and he says looking forward if that if that wasn't enough take a look at this looking forward to moving our embassy to Jerusalem next month all right so <laughs> I mean my goodness hey Mindy how you doing sister you joining the brothers on this late night Bible study I see praise God praise the Lord well you know I just am so blessed to see that right there I mean so far so far the things that President Trump is doing is very much like President Truman you know, in 1948, the, the parallels are unmistakable. I believe that there's just these coincidences that happen um, in, in life are not coincidences at all. 